The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Cosmos. First there was Lost Cities the card game, then there was Lost Cities the board game. Now we have Lost Cities Rivals. Now what this game does is it takes the original game and adds some new twists to it. We're going to have an auction mechanism and that's going to be the only way you're going to be able to get cards in order to fill out your expedition. So money is going to become very important and playing strategically on how you uh, bid and how much you bid is going to play a key part in how you're going to be able to score a lot of points. So dad has been playing this with his lunch group. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you kind of how the game is played and then we're going to come back and we're going to see what dad and his lunch group think of it. So check it out. I have this set up representing a three-player game. So the first thing you'll do is determine a starting player and they can get this uh, handy dandy little card. However, that's not really needed, so we don't actually use that. Then we have wager cards. Now there are 10 wager cards and you'll notice the backs of these are a little different than the normal expedition cards. But you're gonna deal out two to each player and it doesn't matter, uh, they can be face up because everybody's gonna see what they are. Uh, you want to make sure that each player gets unique ones. So if anybody would happen to get a duplicate, then they would throw one back and then they would grab another one. Like I said, there's 10 of these, so shouldn't be an issue uh, with having enough to go around. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, shuffle the expedition deck. And once it's shuffled, then you are going to divide this up into four equal piles. Each player is going to get uh, an equal amount of gold. There are 36 gold tokens, so in a three-player game, each player is going to get 12. Now that we're ready to start, we will take the first deck here, and we're going to flip over a card. Now, on a turn, on a player's turn, they get the option of either calling for an auction, which means they would start bidding on the card that they want, uh, or any of the cards that are in the display, or they will just simply flip another card over and that's the end of their turn. Once somebody does call for an auction, then it's gonna go around clockwise based on who started the auction and people can pass. Once they pass, they're out. Whoever wins, then let's just say that this player over here won and they bid three gold. They would take three gold from their supply and they're gonna put it in the common supply there. Because once we run out of cards uh, in this deck, all those are gone, then we are going to evenly distribute whatever gold that we have there. So let's just say that this player over the course of the game had given up. We got there two, four, oops. He'd spent six gold. Let's say this guy had spent four gold. Okay, so then once that deck is empty, then play stops immediately and everybody gets a fair amount of what is in the pot. Now you'll notice in this demonstration, we actually had one gold left over. So that's going to stay there and that'll carry over to the next round. So, uh, Kind of an approach you can take when playing the game is you may not bid a whole lot and at the next turn you're going to have a lot of money. However, if you're not bidding much, you're not getting cards because the only way to get these cards and put them in your expedition is to actually win them through the auction. There's no other way. So you have to kind of balance that fine line of how much do I want to spend. Now let's just say that on this auction... Uh, this player, let's say this player won here, you'll notice he has these two cards. Um, he already has this symbol's expedition going. You can tell based on the wager he's got there. So he could play that there. The other thing he can do, he hasn't started this one, and let's say he decides he doesn't want to. Uh, he can take one of the cards that he wins in the auction, and it's out of the game. Now, if a player ever gets to the point where uh, they can't play a card that they won in an auction, then that will stay in the display. Once we move on to the next phase, whoever won the auction, uh, the, the last thing that they do is they will flip over a new card. 
And as you can see, we might keep going and going and going because we don't have any low cards. And it could be like this. Somebody calls for an auction. They could win all of these cards. Now, if a card comes up and it's not able to play because all of the other players have already gone past that number for that expedition, then whenever that card is flipped, it's simply thrown out of the game. Uh, the player who flipped it, basically they didn't get a turn. This is what a typical player's tableau could look like at the end of the game. You'll notice that they have one of each of the different expeditions. And uh, while the art gets a little bit different uh, as you go from the low numbers up to the high numbers, there's always a symbol at the bottom of the expedition so you know exactly which one that you're playing on. The stipulation that you have in playing cards to your tableau is that you can play the same number on top of the same number, uh, but you could never go backwards. So in this case, once I've already placed the nine, I could not place anything lower than the nine um, after it. Final game scoring, what we're gonna do is we will look and see uh, how many of these wager cards we have. So you'll notice I, in the uh, uh, yellow one here, there's two wager cards. So the first one doubles, the next one triples, and if I had another one, it would quadruple the score. So I would basically just add up, I don't care about cards that don't have the uh, footprint symbol on them. So this would score two, four, five times three would be 15. Plus, because this expedition is four or more cards in it, you get a bonus of eight points. And this one, this would only score two times two is four. This would score two, four, six times two is 12 plus another eight for having four cards in it. This one is two, four, six. No multiplier there, but I would also be able to add eight because I had four or more cards there. And then finally, this one is going to score only three points. And that really is all there is to how to play Lost Cities Rivals. On your turn, you're either gonna flip a card or you're gonna call for an auction. When you win the cards, you're gonna place them into your tableau. So. Now that you've kind of got an overview on how to play, let's hear what Dad and his lunch group think of it. This has been a very popular game with my lunch group, uh, probably because it plays fast, it's easy to, uh, to learn how to play. Those of you that may be already familiar with uh, the original Lost Cities, the card game, one of the main differences is that in the original, you always started with negative 20 points if you started an expedition. Here, there is no negative. So all you're doing is you're gonna be looking at the footprints and adding those up and then using the multiplier. So very easy game, very fast paced. Everybody that I think that has played this game has really enjoyed it. The bidding can be very cutthroat because once you notice that somebody's running low on cash, you know that uh, if you can bid them up, if they're really wanting to get the cards, then if they run out of cash, then they're not buying any more cards, at least for that round. Um, the other way is to call for auctions when only you are the one who wants to get those cards. If there are cards that nobody else can use, then chances are they're not gonna be bidding. Now, the cutthroat aspect comes in because uh, I might not want any of those cards, but what I want to do is I want to prevent another player from getting them, or because there's a card out there for an expedition that I'm not scoring, I may want to throw that out of the game. So there's a couple of different subtleties that you can uh, employ in your strategies for this game. But like I said, everybody has really enjoyed the game. A uh, lot of fun. The uh, card stock is pretty good. Got a nice finish on the cards. The art on the cards is really nice. In fact, um, there's some really cool looking art that I've posted on our Facebook page of some of these, especially like uh, 10 on the red because it looks like Stonehenge on Mars. Uh, try to find that card. My mistake, I was thinking of the original, but uh, here is the 10 on the red. You can see that it looks like um, the League of Shadows Palace from Batman Begins movie. Uh, you know, that huge palace that's up at the very top of the mountain. But, uh, so the, the, the art is good just like in the original. The cardboard gold, it's okay. Um, I mean, it's thick enough. 
and you don't really need really anything major for this so that's fine if you wanted to i'm suppose you could replace them with poker chips or uh, pennies or whatever you wanted if you wanted to add a little bit extra to that overall it's a very easy game like i said very easy to learn plays fast everyone has really enjoyed it so i highly recommend it that is lost cities rivals and we will catch you guys next time now you saw in the intro the comparison between uh, the box for Rivals and the box for the uh, original card game. But that is another plus, is the fact that it is a small box, so it's easily thrown in a backpack and carried around. So I just wanted to mention that. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.